Hey y'all, this is Joe from St. Bernard Acres. Welcome to the shed here in Wheeling. Uh, one thing I wanted to show you, I'm going to do a video on this as well. This is Saturday, May 9th. But one of the things I did today, if you see that, you probably don't notice anything different. But all that gravel put down for parking is new. Did that this morning. Uh, spread all that out. Like I said, I'm gonna do a video on it. Starting, we're starting to fix this place up here, and our parking in the yard, and everything had become like, you know, a mud pit because of all the rain. So I knocked that out real quick. Uh, this, all this stuff, this is all going to become gravel back here. It's going to be parking for the trailer, the van, the lawn tractor. That shed's going away. All kinds of work going to be happening around here pretty soon. So there's phase one. <laughs> but what I wanted to talk about was batteries and inverters. And what I've got here, I'm going to show you for those who don't know how to do it. Uh, how to convert these 12 volt batteries to a 24 volt battery bank. And for those that do know it, you can skip right over it. Uh, but a lot of people ask, I mean, people are getting into this every day. People are getting into solar. So it never hurts to uh, show them, you know. But these are batteries uh, that I bought six years ago. And they still work great. They still hold a charge. I mean, my niece is getting ready to set up her first solar project. And I recommended four of these. Uh, it's a great way to learn with. They they do a great job for what they are. And if you screw them up, you get a two-year warranty with them. Um, so you can get them replaced. But these are 12-volt, um, 114-amp-hour batteries. So I bought two of them when I set up RV in the... Or, or set up RV, when I set up solar in the RV out at St. Bernard Acres. So, I've still got these two. They still hold a charge. They still take a charge. Uh, it's not what I'm going to use in the cabin, but because I don't have enough of them, but I will find a use for them. But I'm going to hand the camera over to Gail, and I'll show you how this stuff works. Now, I need to preface this by saying I am not an electrician. I am not a solar expert. Do not do what I do and say, well, Joe told me to do it this way. Because Joe's not telling you anyway. I'm showing you how I do it. How my feeble mind understands it. And some of the things I say are a reminder of some of the things you need to research. If you don't know what you're doing, these are things you should research before you do it. I'll bring that up. I'll put it that way. That's my idea. I'm going to tell you what to research. But... If Gail will take over. Oh, I see we have company. Hi, Charlie. Oh, Charlie came in. <laughs> yeah. All right. First thing I'm going to show you what I got here. Back to the old meter. These are positive and negative. That's 12.5. 12.51. Yes. And the other battery is 12.5. Yes. So these are 12 and a half volt batteries. <laughs> what will happen is if if you run your batteries in series, the volts increase, the amp hours stay the same. If you run them in parallel, the volts stay the same, the amp hours increase. Well, I want to increase the volts. These are 12 volt batteries. I need to go to 24 volt batteries. So what I'm gonna do, it's so simple, is I'm gonna take the negative post off of this battery. Well, that one's positive off of this battery. The negative on this battery. Put 
put a cable between them. I'm just going to do these things tight. <laughs> Now I've connected the positive and the negative post on these two batteries. What I've created is one 24 volt battery. So if I test these, that's positive lead, that's a negative. And what do I come up with? Oh, oh. Oh, I'm too low. I gotta step it up. I was at 20 oh. volts. Let me put it up on 200. Now let's see what I come up with. 24.9 .9. I now have a 24 volt battery for my battery bank do another two of these and that's the battery bank I'm going to be running at St. Bernard Acres out in the cabin I'm going to do four batteries wired like this and then this a positive and a negative will go to the inverter um Positive or negative from this one, positive or negative from the next set that I do, I can connect. Then in parallel, these are series. I'll do another two batteries in series. Then these two series I will do in parallel. Oh, okay. See, now I understand what you mean. There you go. So then I will have, by doing these two in series, I have a 24-volt battery with 114 amp hours because the amps don't increase when you do series but once I have the other set and I do these in parallel I'm going to have 24 volts and 228 amp hours because in parallel the amps go up the voltage stays the same Oh, so it doesn't go 24 plus 24 no it's going to be 24 volts if I want to do 24 plus 24, I would then take the negative to the positive of the other set. Okay. Negative to the positive of the other set and blow them all up. No, not really. It would blow up. So that's how easy it is to set up a 24-volt uh, battery bank. Why do you set up a 20... Why do you run 24 volts instead of 36 volts? Or 12 volts? Efficiency. What does that mean? <laughs> if I did four of these batteries in parallel, I would wind up with a 12 volt battery bank with 456 amp hours. 456 amp hours. But you only want to take your battery bank down about 25% max. That's all I ever take mine down. So you really don't have that many amp hours. You've only got 25% of that. Why is that important? If I do four of these in parallel, I have 456 amp hours. If I do them in 24 volts in parallel, I will have 228 amp hours. Let me show you how amps and volts and things like that work. Let me move this out of the way. Okay, I need one of those little things that say, you know, science coming up. Turn it off if you don't like science. Um, you can buy a 2000 watt 12 volt inverter which seems to be the most popular everybody thinks because they have a 12 volt battery bank they can run 2000 watts i'm going to show you why you can't i mean you can but it's silly to do um you have to figure out the amperage the amps is the current here's what happens to figure out the amps you take the watts divided by the volts that tells you how many amps you're using. So you have a 2,000 watt inverter. Oh, my pin's going dead. Divided by 12 volts. What do you come up with? 166.6 amps. You see that? 166 amps. 
you've got 114 amp hours on this 12 volt battery. How long do you think you could run that 2000 watts? In my opinion, a 12 volt system shouldn't have any more than, at most, a 1000 watt inverter. That's what I had in the RV. Let's look at it, the same batteries in 24 volt. So I'm going to take the 2000 watts divided by 24. Now I've got 83.6 amps. Cut that in half. Now, that doesn't mean I get any more time because I also cut the number of amp hours I have by going to 24 volts. I've cut that in half. But I won't be generating nearly as much heat. I won't run the full 2,000. The efficiency part comes in the fact that the more amps, the more current that flows, the bigger the wires you have to have, the bigger the fuses you have to have, the bigger the circuit breakers you have to have. Everything grows exponentially the more current that flows. So now, where I can use, say, a 4 AWG wire to run to my inverter this bad boy is going to need at least a one maybe a zero double out uh, cable so your cables are going to run three times as much that's one of the benefits to running 24 volts so it only makes sense use a lot less current cut that current in half cut the heat in half cut the work of the inverter in half by going to 83 point Three is what that should have been. Duh. 83.3. So, what if you went to 48 volt? 2000 watt. At 48 volt battery bank. Then you're down to like, what, 41.6 amps. Same amount of energy, but you're only having to use 41 amps to do the exact same thing. This is using 166 amps to do. So consider that when you're thinking about your battery bank and the size of your inverter, where this can run a 1,000 watt inverter comfortably, this can do a 2,000 watt inverter com comfortably, this could do a 4,000 watt inverter comfortably. Now, we know how to figure out amps that we're going to be using. If we use 2,000 watts, we know how many amps that's going to be. The amp hours in your battery, four of these in series, will give you 456 amp hours. What that means is, you can run 456 amps out of this battery bank for one hour. That's approximately what that means. So, that would be depleting the batteries to zero, and you basically killed the batteries. So you don't want to go below, I try to keep mine at 80%. You definitely don't want to go below 75%, but let's use that for simplicity. You can only use 25% of that 456 amps. So now you have available to you 114 amps. That's all that's going to be able to run in an hour is 114 amps. If you try to run that 2000 watt inverter, run 2000 watts, that's going to require 166 amps. You can run that for maybe 30 minutes and your battery bank's dead. That's why you have to look at when you're sizing your battery banks. That's one of the things you have to look at to figure out the size you need what you're going to be requiring. You got an air conditioner that runs 5,000 watts. How long can you run that air conditioner on the batteries at night when no charges go to it? You can't. So, that's how amp hours in a battery works. That number is how many amps it can run in an hour. Take a quarter of that because you don't want to kill that battery. All batteries are that way. 
they'll fool you. The converting it to 24 volt, running the exact same 2000 watts, is only going to require 83.3 amps. But the same theory, you can only run 25% of that battery bank, you've dropped the same amount down. What I'm trying to say is it doesn't matter what configuration you use, you still only have the same amount of time for running the wattage if you ran all the wattage the same, depending on the size of the battery bank. These numbers get lower. That number gets lower. So 83 amps out of the 228 that would be available, you're looking now at what 55 amps 55 amp hours available on a 24 volt battery bank remember you take the amp hours of the battery bank 218 you can only use 25 percent of it so there you go that's what you have to look at now then why does it's more efficient come into play it's more efficient to go with the bigger battery banks solely because of the cost of the wiring, the fuses, the circuit breakers, and the amount of loss you'll suffer due to heat and your inverter overtaxing itself. Current creates heat. The hotter it is, the less energy you have. So you want to try to keep everything running as cool as you can. A 12 volt inverter to convert to AC works harder. It takes the inverter, it will use more amps itself because mind you, while that inverter is running, it's also using up some of these little bit of amp hours you have available. So you got to factor that in. If you're converting from 12 volts, it works harder than it does converting from 24 volts, if that makes sense, or 48 volts to convert the same wattage. I mean, these are all numbers that an engineer could tell you all the exact numbers. I'm trying to tell you the principle of how it works using basic numbers. That's all I'm trying to do and tell you what to look for. <laughs> I don't know if any of that makes any sense to you or not, but you really need to look into that. Learn what amp hours are, how your inverter or your usage affects those amp hours and that will tell you what you're allowed to run at night while not generating any electric you got 2000 watt 2000 watts worth of panels during the day and your batteries are in float all of that full sun energy you're creating you could use that during the day but at night you're dependent solely on what's sitting in these batteries and what you're allowed to run that's what you got to study on. That's what you have to learn. That's what we're trying to tell you. Um, but I hope that makes sense to you. We're trying to help you guys out here. Uh, remember, like the video. If you got anything from it, like it. Comment on it. Share it with your friends. If you know somebody that's thinking about going with solar or wanting to go with solar, you know, share this on your Facebook or Instagram, whatever that stuff is. Uh, so your friends can see it uh, Remember subscribe if you're not subscribed go ahead and subscribe because I'm gonna be doing this all the way through setting up the whole thing in my cabin and As I learn things I can show you things So subscribe and hit that bell so you know when we put up more videos But this is Joe and Gail out here in the shed We're out